Hello, my name is Adam and we are exploring how to rapidly develop self-documenting APIs using the Tapu library. In the previous episodes we've, have, we've covered how to describe endpoints as an immutable data structure using the Tapu APIs and how to expose it as an HTTP server. We've also seen how to automatically generate open API documentation given such a description and expose it using the Swagger UI. In this episode we will see how to work with JSON, how to accept requests where the body is in the JSON format and how to generate responses uh, where the body is also in the JSON format. So let's start coding. So in our example what we want to do is we will want to convert instances of the meal class into nutrition information. So our HTTP request uh, will contain JSON corresponding uh, that should be deserialized to the meal class so it will have a name field, a servings meal and an ingredients field and then we want to generate a response and serialize it to JSON and um, this, uh, this response should contain nutrition information for our meal so again the same name uh, some uh, flags if, uh, if the, our meal is healthy and how many calories it contains so the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, provide or uh, somehow come up with a function which converts a string so uh, the request body uh, comes in an, as a string but we need to deserialize it into a meal right and then we need to somehow process a meal into a, a nutrition so this part uh, is deserialization from JSON this part is our server logic and then we need to serialize things into a string again right so this part is serializing the response so of course one approach would be to out actually write out these functions by hand so you know parse the curly braces the quotes and so on and so on this would be tedious and very boring so there's a number of libraries uh, that actually do it automatically for us um, and Tapir doesn't provide um, JSON integration on its own, so it's outside of the scope of the library. However, Tapir integrates with a number of JSON libraries that are available for Scala. So we will be using the uh, JSON iter library. Um, so here are the dependencies that you will need to add. So that's the name of the library. Um, JSON iter is uh, the fastest uh, JSON library for Scala and probably not only for Scala but I think quite generally it's uh, one of the faster ones at least. So that's what we will be uh, using. So we need two dependencies. Um, the core dependency we will need uh, just to test um, if uh, we generate the correct, uh, the correct uh, codex and we also need the macros to automatically generate uh, these conversion functions, right? Mm, so in Scala very often uh, these functions which deserialize data from JSON into uh, some data structure such as this one um, and <clears throat> functions which serialize um, instances of case classes into JSON they are very often automatically generated at compile time using a macro. So uh, this way if uh, the compiler, if our macro doesn't know how to serialize a specific field or a specific data type, you will find out about this um, at uh, compile time, not at runtime. Uh, secondly, there's no runtime reflection so the whole process is uh, faster and the whole feedback loop uh, is, is better as well. So what we need to do to, to generate at compile time uh, these serialization and deserialization functions is adding a derives clause. So we will add a derives a clause here. So we will say that it derives a configured JSON codec. So we of course need to import uh, that class. So we uh, import um, the desired uh, json iter scala macros star so we import um, and the macros and um, so this import uh, gives us access to uh, this type over here uh, a codec is essentially a pair of functions one to convert a string into a meal instance and the other to convert a meal instance into a string um, it's also configured uh, meaning that it uh, depends mm, on implicitly provided configuration which allows us to configure certain aspects of the derivation such as should field names be somehow transformed you know maybe here we use 
camel case names and in our JSON we want to use snake case, name, snake case names and so on. So there's a number of aspects of the derivation which you can configure. Um, but adding this clause will uh, automatically uh, at compile time generate a JSON codec instance for us. Uh, it uh, will be available um, as part of the implicit scope of the MIL instance. So we'll see how this works in a second. In a similar way needed to derive the codec for our nutrition class. And now we can actually just quickly verify if, if things work. So what we will do uh, in our code so far, we will uh, just print line a write to string. Um, so this write to string, we need to import that function as well. It comes from the core um, core package over here. So we need to serialize a meal instance. Let's say it's a salad um, and it's one serving and the ingredients are lettuce and tomato. Um, so let's try actually running this. So maybe I will make it. Uh, yeah, so let's run this. And uh, we did, didn't uh, configure JSON value codec. Yeah. So, you know, mistakes happen. So, uh, let's try again. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I, I mistyped the name of um, the, uh, the, the class that we need to derive. So we need to derive a JSON value codec. And now you can see that we have serialized this mean instance into uh, JSON over here, right? So uh, what this write to string function does is it takes an instance of a type, of a type T, let's say. So here T is equal to meal. But then it also requires that there's uh, an uh, implicitly available value which is uh, a JSON value codec for, for the type T, so parameterized with the type T. And, and this value is available in the companion object of the MIL class because we, we added the derives clause over here. Okay, great. So we have the JSON part ready. Now we need to take care of mm, the Tapir part as well. So the second thing that we need to... So we, we, we already have a way to deserialize the body of the request and to serialize the body of the response, right? Uh, but we want something more. Um, Tapir, one of the goals of Tapir is to automatically generate documentation. Uh, so we somehow need to tell um, uh, to tell uh, OpenAPI what's the structure of our class. And to do that, we will need to we will need to derive uh, the schema of our classes, right? So, so to do that, we will need a couple more dependencies. So I will. Uh, so here we have these dependencies already added. So so far we will only need the Tapir core dependency. Um, so we will need to import. Uh, we we'll just import the whole Tapir package. So this includes the schema class, and we can also now additionally derive the schema. Uh, for our classes. Um, we can print line the schema just so that you see um, just so that you see how the schema looks like. So we can summon an instance uh, of the schema for the meal. So you can see that deriving uh, the schema class causes a schema instance to be available in the implicit scope, right? So it's, um, it's a value that's attached to the meal companion object it can be implicitly looked up by the summon uh, call over here and the compiler will figure out okay i need an implicit i need an instance of a schema of a meal so let's look in the implicit scope if such an instance is available so that's a way to uh, convert a type into a, a an, an an instance um so let's again uh, try running that so now we will uh, we are also generating the schema and you can see that the schema isn't that pretty, right? So here we've got the JSON over here uh, but he, and here we've got the schema and um, the schema is uh, the target of the schema uh, is really to generate open API documentation. It's not to be human readable so we don't re um, even have any pretty printing here but you can see that the schema is, says that our middle class is a product 
right? It is a product because it can, it's, a, it, it, it's a case class and it has a number of fields. So there's the name field over here, there's the servings field over here and so on and so on. Um, so the schema might also contain some validation rules for various fields. So uh, it can also be used to validate um, the instance um, of the incoming class after it is being uh, deserialized. Okay, so we've got um, a way to um, serialize and deserialize JSON. We've got a way to generate the schema which will be used for documentation. So now let's actually um, describe and expose our endpoint. So let's create a meal endpoint. And IntelliJ is very persistent in adding the curl braces, which we don't need anymore. So we will create a post endpoint. So we start uh, the endpoint description just as we did uh, before. Um, and we will say that as an input, we will take in a JSON body that is a meal. So where does this JSON body function come from? Well, it comes from um, integration between Tapir and JSONiter. So if we import HTTP uh, Tapir JSON JSONiter, so this package over here contains this, this JSON body function. So the JSON body function returns a description of an endpoint input or output. So you can use it both as an input as an output. Um, it requires two values to be available in the implicit scope. So it requires a JSON value codec to be available and a schema to be available. And both are available, right? If uh, one of them wouldn't be available, we would get a compile time error that and, you know, the schema or, uh, or the JSON codec is, is not there. So it takes both the JSON value codec and the schema to create a description of a JSON body, right? So a description of a JSON body knows how to uh, decode the body, it knows how to encode the body, it knows how to validate the body, it also knows how to describe the body in the documentation. So in a similar way, we will have uh, uh, as an output, sorry, as an output, we will say that uh, we output a nutrition. And now we need to provide the uh, server logic. So again, simple server logic, uh, let's say we uh, have a meal and we, ge we generate some nutrition information for it. So we just um, <clears throat> copy the same meal name. We also randomize things. Uh, Okay, we don't still we don't need these curly braces. And um, we'll randomize things a bit just so that it's a bit interesting and we need to import it. Okay. So back over here, maybe I will fold it for now. So uh, now we say that we want a next boolean and next integer. Uh, right, so you know, as an um, exercise to the reader, you can plug in some AI here to actually calculate uh, the proper values. Okay, so we've got we've got our meal endpoint described. Right, it says that as an input it accepts meal, as an output it, it produces a nutrition. Um, this JSON body works in conjunction with this derivation over here. So now what we need is uh, we need to expose our endpoint and they generate um, the documentation, right? So let's let's add the missing imports to actually um, expose our endpoint. So we will use uh, the synchronous netty server uh, and we will use http-tapir-swagger-bundle-swagger-interpreter. Okay, and we also need the identity mm the identity wrapper, which we talked about last time as well. Okay, so I think I, we have all the endpoints ready. So now let's uh, generate the documentation. So the Swagger endpoints, we'll use the Swagger interpreter uh, and we will call the from server endpoints and we pass in, uh, we use the identity effect and we will pass in the meal endpoint and we will say that it's uh, my app simply version one zero. Okay, awesome. So now the last thing that we need to do is we need to write the nest sync server. We write it on port 8080 and we add endpoint, we add our meal endpoint and we add endpoints, the swagger endpoints and we start and wait. 
Okay, that should be it. So let's try running this, compiling this, and we will see if things work. Okay, so we are compiling. Okay, so it ran, uh, it started fine. So now let's run a test request. So uh, I have one ready here. So we can see that yeah, it calculated some random data, right? On each invocation, the, 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 um, the response is different. And we have our JSON here as an input. We have some JSON here as an uh, output. Um, what we might also do is we might try providing some data which uh, won't serialize correctly. So where's my cursor? Um, Uh, localhost 8080, all right, and we can say uh, XYZ. So uh, it says, yeah, that it's an invalid value for body because this doesn't, uh, this value didn't serialize as uh, JSON, quite obviously. Um, so finally, what we can do is we can <coughs> see how the, so we can see how the, the, how the documentation looks like. So let's switch to the browser. Um, we have our documentation here. You can see that we have some schemas over here. One schema corresponding to the mir class. We see that the name is required, serving is required. Uh, the ingredient is a list of strings. It's not required, might be potentially empty. Um, same, same here. So these are the schemas. That's our endpoint. You have an automatically generated example value, uh, which we can customize, uh, of course, as well, mm -hmm. if needed. Uh, but we can actually try it out uh, with these automatic values. So we can say here my meal and let's say we will have some beans. So let's execute our request and you can say you can see the response over here, right? Um, so, um, so, so that's, that's, uh, and that's how the documentation uh, looks like. It contains the proper schemas. So uh, if you try to generate anything from the OpenIPA specification, it will use the correct shape um, of your classes. Okay, and I think that's it for our third episode, which covered how to generate JSON values. So just to do a short recap, what we need is uh, we need um, some, kind, some JSON library which will handle the serialization of data into JSON and deserialization um, from a string into JSON. So we, here we integrate with the JSON library library. There's a lot of other options if you, if you prefer other libraries. So all of them have integration with, uh, with Papier. Maybe not all of them, but many of them. Um, so we, yeah, so we need this library. So using this library, we also use its mechanism to automatically derive the, the serialization and deserialization functions using the Scala 3 derives uh, mechanism. So that's the first component. The second component is we need a schema which describes the shape of our data, which is then used for validation and for documentation. So that's the second component. The third component is we need um, integration between Tapir and JSONiter. So that's part of this dependence over here and this import over here. So this brings in the JSON body class, which can be used both as an input and as an output. And it describes a JSON body containing the, uh, the uh, logic to encode a, a class into a JSON string and to decode a JSON string into an instance of a class as well as the shape for documentation. Um, and that's it, uh, really. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time um, when we will cover error handling in Tabio. Um So uh, this tutorial is also available in a textual form in Tapir's documentation. If you would like to try it on your own, um, just you can you you can open uh, you can open the the text version and. Uh, copy and paste some of the dependencies. Uh, the link to that will be in the description of this video. So uh, thank you very much and have a good day.